what is the nature of the experience of enlightenment. When Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa was asked this question, he replied that it was like asking a salt doll about its experience of bathing in the sea. A salt doll went to take bath in the sea. What is the point in asking the salt doll about the experience? Because after taking bath in the sea, the salt doll ceases to exist. The experience of the infinite is something like this. The absolute surrender of the individual to the divine, the complete merger of the individual soul with the supreme soul, the unconditional integration of the Jivatma with the Paramatma. According to Hindu spiritual literature, the experience of the infinite cannot be described using words. It is repeatedly said that words return defeated from it. It is not something which can be grasped by thoughts. Thoughts return defeated from it. However, in the lines that follow, Sri Aurobindo makes an attempt to describe what is completely beyond description. The spiritual experience is about to begin. The speaker is about to experience the ultimate, about to experience the infinite, about to experience enlightenment. And he gets an indication of the nature of the experience. Sri Aurobindo uses a series of vectors to graph the nature of the ultimate spiritual experience. The poet knows that the experience of the infinite, the experience of the ultimate, the experience of the supreme cannot be captured using words. Still, he attempts to capture the same using words. And for him, it is an experience that is about to begin, that has almost begun. What are the coordinates used by the poet to outline, to adumbrate the experience of the infinite? The coordinates include Wisdom, knowledge, light, silence, rapture, presence, fire, and repose. First of all, the experience is wisdom supernal, wisdom celestial, heavenly wisdom, the ultimate wisdom. It is also knowledge which the mind cannot measure. It is knowledge, but unlike worldly knowledge, it is infinite knowledge. Knowledge which cannot be measured by the mind. It is light, but it is light which cannot be rendered by vision. It is light beyond the scope of the physical eyes. It is light which cannot be seen by the physical eyes. It is light which can be seen only by the spiritual eye. The light garments the silence with splendor. No sound can be heard. It is absolute silence. And the silence is garmented. It is clothed. It is covered by light. 
What kind of light? The light that is beyond human vision. The light that can, cannot be seen. The light that cannot be seen by the physical eye and can be seen only by the spiritual eye. This light covers the silence like a garment. There is a presence. But the poet does not specify what presence it is, whose presence it is. The only indication is that the poet decides to capitalize the initial letter of the word presence. Certainly it's a spiritual presence. It's the presence of the infinite. It's the presence of the ultimate. It, the, it is the presence of God. And this is a presence which sends raptures. Rapture is extreme joy, extreme pleasure. It's a rapturous presence. And the spaces of being, which are usually crowded, the spaces of existence which are usually crowded, has now nothing except that one presence. Usually, the existence, the being, and its space of the speaker are crowded. There are quite a few things in the space of the existence of the speaker. But now that space is filled by only one thing, a presence, presence with a capital P, and it's a rapturous presence. Tremble with the fire that knows. The experience is that of rapture, that of joy, that of ecstasy. The fire of knowledge, the fire of supreme knowledge is experienced by the speaker. Thrill with the might of repose. Repose means rest. Repose means a sleep-like state. It is a mighty sleep. It's a thrilling sleep. It's a mighty rest. It's a thrilling rest. Because the speaker has been drawn completely from the affairs of the world. The speaker has escaped completely from the cares of the material universe. And the speaker experiences a calm beyond words, a peace beyond words. Thus the poet struggles to put across in words the experience of the infinite, which is something which cannot ever be put across in words. The poet says that the experience is celestial wisdom, immeasurable knowledge, light beyond the scope of the eye, divine silence, rapturous presence, burning fire and mighty repose.